Welcome to Live. I'm Bill Keller. Thanks for being with me on this Monday night, Tuesday morning as we kick off another week of programming. So good to have you with me tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And let me just say one thing before I even start the program. Our prayers, of course, are with the family of uh, comedian and actor Robin Williams. However, in just a minute, I'm going to talk about this uh, in the news items, obviously. But sadly, on Monday, August the 11th, the year 2014, at approximately noon Pacific time, 3 Eastern time, Robin Williams got to meet the very God he mocked and whose very existence he denied during his life. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Got a lot of news items to hit you with tonight. Lots going on in the world. And I've got an incredibly important topic tonight to go into hour number two with. Um, I'm going to be dealing with this whole ISIS thing. You are more up to speed. You, you've been more up to speed on this whole ISIS caliphate, uh, that whole situation uh, because I started talking to you about that how long ago? About two months ago. Long before the news was even really talking about it. It was even in the news. Uh, we were talking about the border and the Israel-Hamas uh, fighting going back and forth. That was the news. Nobody was even talking about ISIS. Uh, but I saw that whole thing coming a long time ago, even when they first came into uh Iraq with the intentions of setting up a caliphate in his an Islamic state which was always the dream of Osama bin Laden so you've been on top of that long before uh, anybody else really anybody else sadly even even our president unfortunately even though um, he obviously was getting uh, security advisings and you know foreign policy advisings advisories things like that but Obviously did nothing about it till very recent. But we're going to talk about all that in hour number two in the context of ISIS, Islam, slash Islam. Because really ISIS is nothing but a, a, it's Islam. It's just a group of Islamists, that's all. It's just Muslims doing what Muslims have done for 1,400 years. This just happens to be a, a group that has called themselves ISIS, the Islamic State of uh, Iraq and Syria. That's, that's what ISIS stands for. But uh, we're going to get into that hour number two. But uh, welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in wherever you're watching across this great nation, coast to coast, border to no border. Thank you for being with me tonight as we start another great week of programming. Whatever state you are in tonight, know this, that God is looking down upon you and your home tonight. And this is going to be a special couple hours. we got a lot to get to tonight. Uh, and of course, never want to forget our dear friends watching via liveprayer.com on our high def feed on the internet, both here in the United States and around the world. Thank you for tuning in. This is uh, Live Prayer. I'm Bill Keller. We come, of course, live every Monday through Friday, midnight to 2 Eastern, 11 to 1 Central, 10 to midnight Mountain, 9 to 11 Pacific. 
and uh, we are looking forward to the start of a great week. We got so much to get to, so let me just jump right in. Uh, first of all, for those of you new to the program, uh, you've never been to our website, please take a minute, check it out. Bottom right hand corner is the web address www.liveprayer, one word, liveprayer.com. World's largest interactive Christian website, reach a little over two and a half million people around the world every day via the internet. Our main ministry tool is the devotion, daily devotion I've written every morning for 15 years. And as a matter of fact, on the 31st of August, we will be celebrating our 15-year anniversary. So praise God. I would encourage you to uh, check out uh, NRB. Um, I've got to I've write myself a note here. Okay, NRB uh, uh, Museum uh, Live Prayer Sign On. I'm going to try to get a clip of our sign-on from the NRB Museum. That's the National Religious Broadcasters. They actually contacted us. We had a lot of publicity when we started 15 years ago. It was a very unique, interactive, Internet concept nobody had even thought about doing, and uh, they wanted our sign-on, so we actually videotaped the sign-on and sent it to the uh, museum at the National Religious Broadcasters. I just uh, jog my memory. I want to get the hold of them the next day or so, try to get a copy of that. But hit our 15-year uh, anniversary, this uh, the 31st this month. Every morning during that time, I've written a daily devotion on the issues of the day from a biblical worldview. Currently goes to about 2.5 million email accounts around the world every morning. If you don't get it, sign up. It's free. Just go to my website, left menu bar, find the devotional sign-up link, put in your email address, Follow the simple opt-in instructions, and it'll start coming in your email every morning. Tremendous amount of unique content you can't find anywhere else. Live prayer has been on the front lines for 15 years, taking on the uh, the false religion of Islam, cults like Bet Satanic Mormonism, uh, the Scientologist, the atheists, the uh, baby killers, the homosexual activists, gay marriage activists. All the people, the evolutionists, all the people out there that oppose God, want to want to thwart the work of God. Uh, we have been on the front lines, bringing God's truth into the marketplace uh, for 15 years faithfully. Ten years now on television, all across the country on non-Christian stations. We're never, you'll never find this program, trust me, on any of the Christian networks like TBN or any of those places. Because quite honestly. We're not here to preach the choir. We're here to reach the lost and hurting outside the four walls of the church because, my friend, that's where the revival is going to take place, just, just for the record. But uh, check out all the great content at Live Prayer. I don't link to other people's uh, writings, their videos or audios. We have tons of video content, tons of audio content. Uh, every one of my devotionals, all 5,500 of them over the years, is in an archive, a database, the devotional archives that's searchable by topic or keyword just an incredible endless amount almost of unique content all created by live prayer over these years so please check it all out liveprayer.com nothing to join there's none there's no gimmicks or games oh if you want to see this you got to pay money eh, i don't play those games definitely no books tapes or trinkets i refuse to take advertising on the site it's all content designed to bless you, to minister to you, to educate you, to encourage you, challenge you in your faith. All available for free, liveprayer.com. All right, let me do this. I've got a ton of news items to hit tonight that I really need to get to. i got to bring you up to speed on something. And again, it's in the context of these, you know, th- these news items uh, that I pretty much share with you each night. This is where I bring stuff to you far in advance in most cases than you are ever going to hear about on the news. Matter of fact, I get emails all the time. Man, you were talking about that two weeks ago. Why are they just talking about it now? Well, because, number one, this is what I live and breathe every day for the last 22 years of my life. But I've got to know what's going on so I can help guide people and lead people. You know, a leader's got to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And sadly, you know, we've got a bunch of blind, deaf, and dumb shepherds, which is why the, the people aren't being led anymore. 
So these news items are important, and, and, and this isn't a news program. This isn't the evening news. These are issues that are going on in the world around us that I put in a biblical context so you can understand what's going on in, in, the, big, in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual uh, world, and you can see how these things are fitting in. Okay? So stay with me. Got a lot. I'm going to try to get a couple calls before we end the hour. We're going to take our break between hours as we do every night, minute and a half our stations along the live per network. And uh, then we will get into hour number two. I'm going to reset that second hour very quickly because I want to talk to you tonight about how Islam, specifically ISIS as a part of Islam, could be the United States Babylon. And that's in the context of exactly how God used Babylon, that the heathen people group, as, a, as, a, as an instrument of judgment against the children of Israel. Not even, not once, several times. And I've long told you that God's judgment is not only due, it's overdue. Uh, it could happen at any moment. People, of course, cough at that, and they say, well, how is God going to judge? God's, God, I've, I've brought to the table so many ways God could judge this nation. In, in my gut, I would say it's most likely either going to be just a complete financial collapse, which could happen so easily, or it literally could be a situation where you had an outside group pretty much disrupt this country to the point everybody's living in fear. It's a whole different world. Martial law might be an act. I'm going to get into it in the second hour because this is, this is serious stuff. And, and listen, this administration is either so dumb, so ignorant, or just purely in wanton, um, just just political malpractice is probably the best terminology I could come up with. Because really, at the end of the day, the government's got one main job, and that's protect this land and its people. And everything that's happened in the foreign policy realm and the domestic realm that has weakened this country only makes it more susceptible. What have I always told you about the border? I'm, just, I'm not going to talk about the border, but what have I always ta 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 taught you about the border? Don't take your eyes off the prize. The poor children, the poor, they are a distraction. They are a red herring. The issue at the border has nothing to do with a bunch of law-breaking, illegal alien children. It has to do with national security. As a matter of fact, there's a guy named James O'Keefe. He's a, what he call he calls himself a citizen journalist. He goes in uh, undercover cameras like Planned Parenthood and different places and catches liberal organizations uh, organizations like a Planned Parenthood, the largest baby killer in the country, catches them on tape doing what they really do that they don't obviously want people to know, which is lie to people, uh, cover up rapes of children, uh, promote absolute perverted, promiscuous sex to, to, to young teenage girls, that kind of stuff. He actually put on a, an outfit and a mask to look exactly like Osama bin Laden, crossed into the crossed the border, I think two or three times on camera, never stopped, never, you know, nobody came to him, asked him what he was doing, nobody asked for his paper, just walked across two or three times just to see what would happen. Looking like Osama bin Laden. Anyway, we'll get in the border again later. But it's about national security. All right, let's get to a bunch of stuff. Oh, one of the big news stories today that I'm going to put on hold till tomorrow night because of the Robin Williams uh, death tonight that I want to talk to you about first is this tragic killing of a, of a young black, uh, uh, I guess, teenager. I guess he was, I don't know if he's still a teenager. I know he's getting ready to go to college in a couple days in a suburb of St. Louis. Another horrific situation between um, 
you know, a neighborhood and the police and all that. Lots of details unknown. Of course, the typical race baiters are all jumping up and down already. Uh, but there's a lot of issues there that we need to look at as the facts come out. But there's a lot of things we can talk about because this kind of confrontation between the police and people in a lot of the minority communities, I mean, even though, even though, even though, even a lot of the white communities, I, I, I've got three or four stories that never even got on the news because they didn't have a racial angle of police and uh, uh, you know some white teenagers in different parts of the country. One was Boston, one was Washington State, I believe. Similar stuff, got shot. Of course, you had the chokehold in New York. So there's a lot of that stuff all wrapped into one, with the biggest one being the St. Louis uh, shooting that we're going to get into tomorrow night. But I want enough time to unpack that, and I just don't want to blow through it because there's a lot of elements there. And again, a lot of it boils down to where is this nation spiritually? Where are people at spiritually? So we'll get in that tomorrow night, I promise. Let me, let me start with Williams. Sadly, uh, as I said earlier, at about noon Pacific time, 3 Eastern time, according to the police reports, Robin Williams, uh, comedic genius, Oscar, uh, award-winning actor, just tons of great films, Good Will Hunting, Miss Doubtfire, Good Morning Vietnam. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I think, and, and from what I heard, there's either three or four that are already in the can that are going to come out. Uh, so for Robin Williams fans, you have that to look forward to. And while the media is falling over itself to pay tribute to really a, a, um, an entertainment legend, I think at 63, that moniker is applicable. Uh, you know, he's been around a long time, started back in the 70s. Remember M Mork? Uh, actually, that character was a limited character on the old Laverne and Shirley program, and then they spun out, and they spun out Mork and Mindy off of that. Uh, you know, started out with the typical stand-up uh, routine, got a lot of breaks with Johnny Carson and later Leno, and then the movie. Uh, just, just, just an incredible career. Again, Oscar award-winning actor. I mean, he uh, played some very serious roles, Dead Poet Society. Played some very serious roles that aren't maybe quite as remembered, of, remembered off the top of people's heads because you always think about him being such a great comedian. And, of course, his forte was the ad-lib. So much of what he did was just <laughs> never scripted. But... Um, so while the media will be paying tribute to Robin Williams, and rightly so for his career, I'm sorry, and I know there's probably some people that are going to be maybe upset with me tonight for, for going here, but you got to go here. Listen, this, this isn't entertainment tonight. This isn't TMZ. This is live prayer. I'm Bill Keller. I'm an evangelist. Okay? At the end of the day... I really care about only one thing, the eternal souls of men. One scripture guides me day in and day out and has for the 22 years I've been in the ministry, and that's where God says it's his desire that all come to repentance, that none be lost. So while everybody else gets to, you know, do the fun walk down memory lane, you know, I know it's going to sound a little cold maybe to some but this is the this this is this is what it's about what I'm getting ready to talk to you about you know a lot of people don't know Robin Williams grew up in a suburb of uh, Detroit Michigan not a rich family fairly affluent definitely upper middle class um, mother was a model I believe father some kind of a job in the auto industry, obviously Detroit. So they, they and they were fairly well off. Only child. Uh, dad Episcopalian, mom part of the Christian science cult. Cult. Mary Baker Eddy, cult, trust me. I've never really got too much into Christian science on this program, but uh, again, what have I always told you about a cult? The, the ultimate authority of any cult is the writings of its founder. And that would be Mary Baker Eddy 
founder of Christian Science, cult from the pits of hell. I may get into it one of these nights soon, but uh, anyway, mother's into that, father's an Episcopalian, and probably like most Episcopalians, it's because his parents were probably Episcopalian, he probably went once or twice, even if he went every Sunday. It's a, it's a pseudo-Catholic type of a service, 25, 30 minutes, uh, very litur... litur- a lot of liturgy, a lot of um, symbolism, uh, you know, very, you know, a lot of pomp and circumstance. So a lot of idolatry, a lot of symbolism, uh, and idolatry, I mean, really. But at the end of the day, it's uh, most Episcopalians far from God, not, you know, it's just a, it, it, it's a routine, Okay. And, of course, the Episcopalians now, I mean, they're all into the um, ordaining of homosexual priests, and all, they're all into the gay agenda. They're all in, But all indications and all reports through the years, Williams had nothing to do with any of that. Very liberal in his, obviously, his politics, and took a very liberal, non-biblical stand on issues like abortion, all for that gay marriage of course Hollywood all for that so it took a very anti-biblical stand on everything and again this has nothing to do with his work as an entertainer he did some you know he was always there uh, to entertain the troops and all that's wonderful this isn't about this this is about his soul because there is a lot of recorded uh, thing a lot, of, a lot of things he said on the record a lot of YouTube's on video, you know. The guy, well, he wasn't as bad as uh, George Carlin in his absolute mockery of God, but he wasn't far behind and, uh, you know, had no problem mocking God, you know, making fun of Jesus, didn't have much good to say about the Catholic Church, um, didn't have much to say about religion, good to say about religion. And pretty much his spiritual life was non-existent. Some have claimed he's an atheist. I'm not going to go there that he absolutely denied the existence of God. But if he, if he accepted the existence of God, it was a tacit acceptance. He had no relationship. It was not a personal situation. All right, let me just lay that aside for a second. It's been well documented. He battled with alcohol and cocaine addiction. Uh, 20 years clean, had a relapse, uh, went back to rehab, got somewhat cleaned up again. But throughout his whole life, he's battled with depression. Now, Robin Williams killed himself today. uh, The official cause of death was asphyxiation. He killed himself, all right? I'm not going to spend a bunch of time going into suicide tonight. Because, as I've said before, it's one of the most, you know, probably other than adultery, it's the most selfish act a person can commit. And because of the, I mean, I mean they're, they're pretty much, adultery and suicide are about neck and neck as far as on a scale of selfishness. I did a whole thing on suicide maybe three, four, five weeks ago. Just go to my archives. By the way, every one of these programs we record. Just go to liveprayer.com, upper right-hand corner of the screen, find the Live Prayer TV link, click on that. There's a link for the archives. All of our programs are tagged by the date and the topic. Find the one on suicide, watch it. It's a great program, powerful program. Um, But Robin Williams killed himself. And, uh, And let me just say for the record, if... A few minutes before killing himself, he accepted Jesus as a Savior, according to the Bible. He's in heaven right now. I hardly believe that that's what happened. Common sense says it's not. Uh, That would be the case if it did happen. I just want to put that out there. Chances are very, very good that didn't happen, number one, because if it did, he probably would have made a different decision and wouldn't have killed himself. Um, I'm pretty confident, not because I say so, but because of what the Bible teaches that Robin Williams 
as of noon Pacific, 3 Eastern time, uh, stood before God, his creator, the God he mocked often, probably rejected the existence of or didn't have an opinion one way or another. But he got to meet God. And I, cannot, I, I can tell you this, God wasn't impressed with his Academy Award, wasn't impressed with his comedic wit, God only saw one thing, and that was his sins. And there's one thing that separates us from God for eternity, and that's our sin. That, my friend, is why it is so critical. I, I tell you night after night how critical it is to make that decision for Jesus. Because without Christ, it's your sin that will be the cause of you spending eternity in hell, separated from God and it's sad. It's sad when it, nobody needs to go to hell. I've told you many times, hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and the third of the angels that followed him out of heaven in rebellion, not man. God, sin, God didn't send Robin Williams to hell. Robin Williams is in hell for all eternity because Robin Williams chose to go there. Now, I'm sure, like most people, Rob, you know what? I really want to go to hell for all time. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure that that wasn't the thought. But let me tell you something. A man as intelligent as Robin Williams. A man as traveled as Robin Williams. A man who had the ability to be influenced by pretty much all the world had to offer. Nobody can ever tell me that either he wasn't personally presented with the opportunity of accepting Christ, which I would assume at some point he had. So there's a lot of people in Hollywood that know Jesus, and there's a lot of people in Hollywood that are very aggressive in at least sharing their faith. So I'd be very shocked if that didn't happen at some point. Um, Again, Robin Williams, a very intelligent man. No doubt, he, he's very familiar with Jesus and the whole story. And listen, at the end of the day, you either, you either buy it, buy the story, and come on board, or you don't. That, and that's your choice. You don't have a pre-programmed chip that makes you choose, that, that, that says you're saved just because you have a saved chip in you. And you're certainly not going to hell because you have a chip that says you're never going to be saved and you, you, you know, you're destined. You know, that, that, that flawed theology just flies in the face of everything the Bible teaches about free will. It was a choice that Robin Williams made, not once, but I'm sure numerous times over his life, to, like most people, just ignore the gospel. And no doubt, and, and I'm pretty sure probably there were a couple times when he was confronted with the gospel and flat out rejected it. But ignoring the gospel isn't going to be, that's not going to, that's not going to help you when you stand before God. Because again, it's our sin that separates us from a holy and righteous God. So, as I was watching a lot of the tributes come across the uh, TV tonight, as I was getting ready to try to get a try to get my little nap before the program, I stayed up for some of it. I already and and, and I've I already knew where Robin Williams stood. I didn't even have to do any homework because he was uh, great friends with Christopher Reeve, who was an absolute. Uh, who absolutely rejected Christ and the gospel. Absolutely, because, I mean, on the record, rejected the whole gospel message. And he and, Ro he and uh, Christopher Reeve were good friends. Actually, they were, two, they were in the same class at Juilliard. Uh, I think there's 20 actors taken a year. They were 
two of 20, whatever year they were there, and uh, in the same class. So they were great friends. Matter of fact, Robin Williams paid for a lot of Christopher Reeve's uh, medical care in the later years. So I've known a lot about Williams and where he stood theologically and with God and the whole gospel message years ago, and uh, nothing recently has changed that. As a matter of fact, the mockery has even got worse. And let me tell you something, you don't sit there, you know, you don't sit there and mock God and um, then say, oh, I was just kidding. I mean, you just don't go there. I'll give you a great example. Remember the comedian Sam Kinison? Sam Kinison was an Assembly of God evangelist. Turned from the ministry, went to comedy, had a routine with some of the most blasphemous things to say about the Lord that you could ever want to hear. I mean, it would make you almost cry it was so blasphemous. And again, as a guy who used to be an, uh, an evangelist, you know, he knew how to really put the story Put the, put the blasphemy together in a way that really was bad. Right before he died, he uh, turned back to the Lord and was trying to get his life together. Had renounced a lot of his routine, especially all the stuff that mocked and blasphemed the Lord. Was starting to try to get his life together. And... Uh, was driving down an Arizona highway one night, and a drunk driver plowed right into him head first and killed him. So, it's uh, it's it, it it's sad that somebody of the talent of Robin Williams, like so many in the entertainment world, have such a dark side to them that obviously their fans never see, to the point that it would literally cause him to take his life today. So we pray for his family, obviously, and pray that through it all, maybe some of his fans and friends and family might start thinking about their own mortality and what really happens that moment we die and hopefully have some people in their life that can share the gospel with them. We had another super moon this weekend. I told you months and months ago when they started this whole blood moon uh, scam to raise a bunch of money with their books and their tapes and all their teachings that don't spend a dime on this stuff. It's just, it's just the uh, heavens doing what the heavens do in a normal cycle and it's absolutely a total snow job, the things that they say are going to happen because nothing happened with the first. I know there's four of them, two this year, two next year. We've gone through one and in between a bunch of super moons. Um, just reiterating that it's a total con job. Black Jesus, I told you about the show on the Cartoon Network. Uh, they split time with a station called Adult Swim, I think from 8, in the, eight at night to 6 in the morning. So Cartoon Network has it from 6 in the morning to 8 at night, Adult Swim, and Adult Swim's a bunch of unedited Japanese anime and uh, different unscripted series. They got a one now called Black Jet. By the way, Cartoon Network Adult Swim's owned by Turner Broadcasting. Uh, TNT, TBS, uh, CNN, HLN, Headline News, all Turner. Black Jesus is about a Modern day, I guess Jesus is now living in Compton, California, smokes dope and swears. and Just, again, total blasphemy. I told you about it maybe a week, 10 days ago. Number one cable show last Friday night. Isn't that lovely? Target. Oh, for all you people that love Target, uh, they're now all in on the gay marriage thing. Uh, why... When we now know that less than 2% of the population even identifies with that perverted, unhealthy, unnatural choice of sexual relationship, why are these major corporations still bending over and 
and making business making business decisions to cater to that small fraction of society. And I'll tell you, it's not good for Target. I don't know what kind of market research they did because they said their decision was a year in the making, but uh, people are leaving Target right and left. You know, first it was Costco uh, with the uh, Dinesh D'Souza book, America. And, of course, the head of Costco is a huge uh, supporter of democratic causes, abortion, and gay marriage, and the whole liberal agenda. And, of course, Target's part of Dayton Hudson, based in Minneapolis, which is a very progressive state. So, But I guess they don't care about the people they're losing because they're losing a bunch of them. Houston Mayor, lesbian, by the way, who was supported by our favorite pastor, Joel Olstein, just for the record, when she was running. She wants a non-discrimination ordinance for the city of Houston. Now, basically what that means is that men, that, that transgendered people who are gender disoriented can use any bathroom, men or women, any locker room, men or women. Of course, there's a big fight against this whole situation led by the clergy. And, of course, the clergy doesn't, it does not include the pastor of the largest church in the city and the country, Joel Osteen, because he'd never do that, take a stand for anything righteous. And there's a big fight going on now between, I guess, lesbians and transgendered people. and just, just crazy. And th this is what happens when you, when, you, when you start catering to such perversions you get all this absolute confusion. You know, gender disorientation. What the? God either made you a boy or a girl. I don't know what disorientation there is. Up until the last few years, I mean, I'm 56 years old. Up in the last two few years, there was two genders, male or female. There was no disorientation. I mean, I'm not trying to be crude, but, you know, if you were born, you know, with male genitalia, then you were a man. And if you didn't have it, you were a woman. I mean, it's pretty simple. I don't, I don't understand what gender disorientation means. By the way, praise God for those uh, the two doctors who work with uh, Samaritan's Purse that gave literally put their lives on the line to go treat these Ebola patients in Africa the ones that were sent back to uh, Emory in Atlanta, both of them seem to be getting much better, praise God. So we're thankful for that. And those are some real servants. They walked right into a den of death and literally put their lives on the line to show Christ-like compassion. I mean, you got to really, you really got to admire these people. Oh, pastor of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida. I got to get his name. I'll look it up uh, tonight and give it to you tomorrow because pray for that man. I guess there was a uh, a funeral scheduled for his church, and I guess a couple a day or two before the funeral, he canceled it because he found out the funeral was for a man that was living in an uh, openly homosexual relationship with another man and he said that he was not going to allow his church to be part of such perversion that uh, his in his pulpit they preach it's a sin and it would be hypocritical of him to allow his church to host a funeral for someone who had chosen chosen to live uh, such a lifestyle of course all the people in Tampa are up in arms and all excited. And how could he do that? Praise God for this guy taking a stand. I mean, and it's a sad, it's sad that this even has to be mentioned, but that's how few and far between true men of God, there are men of God like that out there who will take a stand for righteousness these days. And in his defense, you know, it was something that was booked at the, at the uh, church by the... Uh, the dead man's mother, and they just, you know, assumed it was a, uh, you know, a local family that uh, wanted to, you know, have a funeral service for their son, but in, again, in 
uh, becoming acquainted with the situation, it was brought to his attention that this was a guy who lived in an openly, uh, who chose to engage in uh, open, unrepentant, perverted sex with another man. And uh, the pastor said, not in my church. Praise God. Oh, man. And again, it's sad that you even have to mention such a thing, but a stand for righteousness, a stand for the gospel in these last days is so rare. <laughs> but praise God for that brother. And I'll, I'll get his name uh, for tomorrow night so I can call his name before God. But I've been praying for him, praying for his church. That's great. And, and, and listen, this has nothing to do with dissing the, the, the dead or anything like that. I mean, save, save the emails, you know. I mean, there's a lot of places that he can get a good funeral service. It doesn't have to be in a church that doesn't, that, that believes the scriptures and it believes that the scriptures teach that that choice is not just a perversion but a sin. Again, that's like a church hosting a, a gay wedding. I mean, it's an absolute abomination and a desecration of the church to allow such an abomination to take place. Any church that allows such a thing, you know, they're a stench in the nostrils of God and even call themselves a church is, a, is, is an affront. So. All right, so that's it. Uh, by the way, you're watching live prayer. I'm Bill Keller. Thanks for being with me on this Monday night, Tuesday morning edition. We're here live every Monday through Friday, midnight to 2 Eastern, 11 to 1 Central, 10 to midnight, Mountain 9 to 11 Pacific. I have a very important, critical uh, topic tonight on Islam becoming the United States Babylon. And what that is simply speaking to is how God used Babylon in the Old Testament several times as an instrument of his judgment when he brought the hammer down on the children of Israel for their sin and rebellion. And over these many, many months, I've told you many, you know, over and over that there's a lot of ways that God's judgment could, you know, his final ultimate wrath and judgment could be poured out on this nation once and for all. Lots of ways. And, uh, one of those ways is the false religion of Islam. They are stronger today, more powerful today, more affluent today, more influential today. Than hey, don't forget where those 9-11 where those hijackers came from. Do you remember? They came from Saudi Arabia, our good friends. Our good friends, Saudi Arabia. All right? Saudi Arabia finances a lot of this stuff. And you've got very legitimate, real threats from Islam. At the, I've told you a million times, it's not a matter of if they come after this nation, if they attack this nation, only when. And this is a reason, this is one of the main reasons I've talked to you so much about the border the last month or so. Again, Nothing to do with children, nothing to do with the law-breaking, illegal immigrant children. It has everything to do with our national security. So we'll talk about that right after we come back out of our break in uh, hour number two. Hi, this live prayer. Hello? Hi, who, who am I talking to? Seven two seven six one four zero six nine nine. I've got time to take a couple calls here. I told you I'd get a few calls in. We're gonna take a couple calls here uh, uh, before we hit the top of the hour for a quick break, minute and a half for our stations along the network, and then we'll come back, reset hour number two real quick, get into our main topic, and definitely try to pick up uh, some phone calls in hour number two as well. I know we've got a lot, we got a lot of ground that we've covered tonight. Still a major topic to hit you with tonight that is so critical uh, that you really need to sit down and pay attention tonight. So much of what I share with you each night, um, you know, 
It's on the pages of your newspaper. It's on the headlines on your uh, internet sites. But at the end of the day, you're hearing about it on this program, not so much from a news standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint, how it fits into the overall scheme of things spiritually. Hi, this is Live Prayer. Hi, this is Joan from Indiana. Hi, Joan from Indiana. How are you tonight? I'm pretty good. I well, have a prayer good. report and a prayer request. Well, how can I help you tonight? Well, I'm getting a new roof at a very reasonable price, which well, I needed for two years. That's wonderful. I remember we've prayed about that before. That's right. Amen. Well, that's a great report. Good for you. The, pray, uh, the prayer request is my daughter's best friend okay. um, passed away a couple oh. of days ago, and my daughter Julie's having a very hard time with it. And I just—I miss the person too, but I just—I'm afraid was of my it, daughter. Was it? Was it something? Uh, was it something uh, that happened suddenly, or had she been sick for a while? She had a bad heart, and she worked too hard, and she passed away in her sleep. Oh. And she was only fifty-two. Oh, that's sad. Well, let's pray for your daughter, obviously, and pray for this woman's family. I know they're probably going yes. through a very difficult time right now. They Father, are. I thank you for Joan tonight. We thank you for this wonderful praise report for her roof. And, and Lord, we just thank you for uh, making that happen and, 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 and that blessing, Lord. You know it's an issue that needed to be met, and we just thank you for opening the right doors to make it happen. And Lord, we do pray for her daughter's her daughter tonight and, and the family of her friend that I know is grieving tonight, just be with them in a special way. Give them your strength. Uh, let them feel your presence at these, in these difficult days and just guide them through. And, uh, Lord, we just pray tonight that it will be a wake-up call to all those that know, knew this young woman that life is short and we need to be prepared. So we'll thank you for watching over these dear people now. And be with my friend Joan in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. And thank, thank you, dear. You God much. bless you, Joan. 727-614-0699. And, uh, you know, sadly, in these probably the next few days where the Robin Williams tributes and that whole thing will be... Um, will be prominent in the news, you're not going to hear anybody talk about the real issue. And that's, that's really sad. Hi, this live prayer. Hi, this is Bill. It is. Who's this? Hi, Bill. This is Caroline from Chicago. Hi, Caroline. How can I help you tonight? Yeah, I talked to you probably last um, March. Okay. And um, I called in for prayer for my mom. She was 99 years old, and she wasn't doing well. I remember, I just because of the age, yes. Yes, yes. And, well, she did pass away oh. uh, March 28th. Oh. Okay. So she's home with the Lord. But and She lived a long, <laughs> good life. She did. But I'm having a little bit of hard, you know, hard time with this. Sure. Um. I need some prayer, first of all, for my husband. He has memory loss. Okay. And um, we're supposed to go to uh, Rush to have him evaluated. Mm -hmm. Very worried about him. He's only 68 years old. Okay. I uh, right. can't remember what he did that day. Oh, okay. my. Okay. Yeah. And then also I am experiencing myself a lot of anxiety and depression. All right. Because of losing my mom and, you know, with what's going on with my husband. Sure. And well, then we have just, you know, insomnia, can't make any good decisions. Were you going to, are you going to church anyway, or you have some uh, Christian friends in your life that... Uh, oh, I, yes, I've been born again for 40 years, and I do have very good... Good. Well, I, I, I just was wondering, because it's so critical, especially sounds like you're going through a lot to have have some people in your life that can at least be there to support you and pray for you and things yeah. like that. That's well, I am looking for a good church. Good, good. Um, well, let's pray tonight. Father, I thank you for my dear friend tonight. And, and, Lord, we lift up her dear mother and thank you for the wonderful life you did give her. And, and, and Lord, I know she lives on even today in all those lives she touched along her long journey. So we celebrate her home going. But, Lord, I just pray for her dear daughter that she finds peace in knowing her mother's not only with you, 
but that you help heal her for that from that tremendous loss I'm sure it is be with her husband guide him through these days and I just ask right now that these doctors who will be evaluating him will hear from on high and that you will guide them in their uh, you know in their exams and in their uh, strategy on wh- how to meet these needs so he can live a high quality of life for many many more years and just take the anxiety and all the fear and trepidation away from my dear sister and just replace it with your peace now I lift up this family ask that you be with them in a special way bless them richly and we'll thank you for it now in Jesus name oh, thank Amen. You. Amen. And, amen. and Bill, thank you so much. I want to thank you for your boldness and well, your stand for Jesus. Well, You're such an encouragement well, to me. Thank you, dear. Um, I just can't tell you, and I'm praying for you. Thank and you. I truly love you. I well, watch you every night. Well, so, thank you so much. I appreciate it more than you know. God bless you. And uh, the prayers of our dear friends keep me going every day. Trust me when I tell you that. All right, we're rolling up the top of the hour. I need to take a few minutes here before we hit the top of the hour break just to kind of bring you up to speed on where some things are at. Um, Real quick, don't forget, we're going to hit our break top of the hour for our stations along the network. Come back after our minute and a half break. I'm going to reset things real quickly because I've got a very critical topic. Um, This is something I've been talking to you about for a long time. I've made the case now that the actual news media is all over this. Now that our dear president has been forced by circumstances to actually do something, and even though I know that's foreign to him, (laughs) um, it even makes more sense to talk about this tonight uh, in the context of the very real Not just danger, but the very real problem that we're facing as a nation. You know, yeah, we have people out there, and and, you know, I think we live for a long time with the confidence that because of our great military might, uh, we had two great oceans protecting protecting us on the east coast and west coast. um, Just because. A lot of things. I think we always had a lot of peace that we were invincible. Well, you know, that was shattered a little bit on 9-11. And I know it's been 13 years. But people, most people, absolutely underestimate the evil of Islam. And, 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 and listen, I got it. I've I've warned you a million times. One of the reasons you underestimate me is because you've got a bunch of useful idiots called the media that are being led by the nose by these Muslim advocacy groups like CARE or whatever to soft sell and to lie to you about what Islam's about. I got it. I'm not going to say more, but don't you go anywhere. You need to... Watch this and, and listen. If you got friends, don't don't wake them. But if you got friends that are up tonight, call them and tell them to turn on the station in your town to watch this. This is critical stuff, and it's the culmination of a lot of things I've been telling you about this subject that I really want to hit hard tonight because it finally is in the news, and a lot of it will make even more sense than it has in the past. Uh, so make sure you uh, stay tuned. Listen, uh, two things. Number one. Still working out some details. Plans right now are to be in Chicago on Saturday, the 15th of November. Flying in the morning, do something either around 1, 1 1.30 or 2 in one part of the city. Do something around 7, 7.30 at night in another part of the city. And then do either one or two services on a Sunday morning in a local church uh, in another part of the city. So hit three different sections of the Chicagoland area. Either And one of those will either be actually in Indiana or right on that Chicago border there, uh, the far south suburbs, uh, probably something uh, down in the Oak Brook area, somewhere down there, and uh, probably something up either just north of the city or some, something very accessible, you know, along the uh, Kennedy, something like that. So we'll work it out. We'll work out all the details and the locations, all that, and get that to you. But uh, looking forward to that because I really believe that that's going to be an important 
uh, 24 hours in the city of Chicago to really light the match to, I think, what's going to have to happen in Chicago to spread to the rest of the nation. All I can tell you is uh, we're still trying to pull in this last six. Actually, another 1,000 came in, so it's 15,000 right now um, from two weeks ago, and then we need 22 by the end of the month. It's 37, and I'm just uh, sitting here tonight just asking God to move on some hearts. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you because it's really out of my hands now. Uh, I just know that without some money this week, this is probably going to be it. So I'm just at a place where I'm praying because, and, and, and just for the record, so the rest of the network, everything else on the network's fine because we've been on 15 months on all of our other stations. I think it's about 70 right now we're on around the country. Uh, places like Las Vegas and Oklahoma City and Colleen, Texas and Alabama and several markets in Florida and North Carolina. All, all those cities, you're fine, okay? You're, you're in good shape because we've been on a long time, that, a long enough time. And because we've got a network deal there, the numbers aren't quite as anywhere near as bad. Uh, and, the, and that also includes our satellite, our uh, Internet, and all of our technical aspects of the program. So that's fine program goes on it's just our chicago market which really represents two-thirds of our audience right now we've got about a hundred thousand all of other other cities and of course because there's a great 10 million people that live in chicago and uh, we're really scratching the surface with the 200,000 we've got there but i really need one one or two people that can just really step up and help me uh, the you know the the 20 the, the other 22 we we can get away with at the end of the month so I'm really not even focused on that right now other than the fact that we're going to have to deal with that in a couple of weeks. But right now, the only thing that's going to keep us going is that 15 that I've got to have. So the six we've got in hand isn't going to cut it unless I can pull together a significant portion of the rest of the 15 real quick, like in the next day or so. So there you go. It's up to God now. It's up to the people that are watching. Uh, some of you have the ability to step in and keep this program on for the couple hundred thousand people that watch it every night like that dear woman who just called said she watches every night there's a lot of people like that there's nothing like this on television i know trust me i know what's on and uh you know and that's one reason why we fight this battle every every month and always have for the 10 years we've been on tv but uh god always comes through somehow and uh, but at some point, we just got to, I mean, at some point, you know, it's fish or cut bait. We, you know, at some point, we just got to pay the bill. So, and we stretched it, stretched it, stretched it about as far as we can stretch it. We just got to come up with it. But there's somebody sitting there right now that's got 15 grand sitting in a checking account, believe it or not, or sitting with 15 grand sitting in, you know, a savings account doing nothing. Or sitting there with 15 grand in, a, in, a, in, a, in an account you can pull from or a business. And you can write a check for 15. You know, over 22 years of ministry, 15 years online, 10 years on TV, we've had a lot of people step up in these type of situations. You know, come up with 100 grand in a whack, 50, 80 one time, 50 once, 30, 40 a couple times, 20 many times. You know, so, I mean, it's just the nature of what I do because I don't play the games. And, you know, maybe I'd be better off if I did like the rest of these guys and just stood on my head and told you to give me $30 million for an airplane. I mean, somehow they raise all the money they need for airplanes and Bentleys and buildings and uh, mansions. I mean, Myers, I got, I think she's got six or seven, one, one for every family member to the tune of about five, six million. I mean, so maybe that's what I should have been doing, but I'm not going to play those games. I'm not going to get into that stuff. If you want to give on a credit card, go to my website, liveprayer.com, click on the donation link. There's a secure server there for uh, credit cards and PayPal. All right, minute and a half. Be right back. Important topic. Don't go anywhere. Go anywhere. Go. Look for me. 
the sun are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard and you're not strong. Well, I know the answer for you. And it will lead to the truth. Don't look back to yesterday. Now there are answers. Welcome to Live Prayer. It's waiting there. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. You can make it through. And welcome back to Live from Bill Kelly. Thanks for being with me on this Monday night, Tuesday morning edition of the program. Appreciate you call, tuning in tonight. We're going to get some more of your calls. I know a lot of people were wondering if we're going to take calls the second hour. Got a couple emails asking that in the in the break. And yes, we will. Yes, we will. We will get to your calls in this hour. Uh, so I know there's a lot of people that need prayer. And so I want to comment on some certain things. And uh, we will definitely uh, make some time before this hour is up. But we've got a critical topic tonight that I really want to talk to you about in depth uh, because finally things are now happening that is, that's in the news, things I've been telling you about for months that the news media hasn't really covered or talked about. Um, and, of course, even when they did, they candy-coated it and, whitewashed it as they normally do. They never tell you the truth about anything that's happening with Islam because it's not politically correct to tell the truth. And, you know, it's amazing to me because Islam's only been on the scene for 1,400 years. The historical record of Islam is there for all the world to see. There's this great new invention called the Internet, and via the Internet you can pull from all kinds of historical records uh, I'm not talking some blog that some guy sits in his basement, his mother's basement in his underwear and writes every day. I'm talking about legitimate historical records that are so easy to uh, to look up now. I've told, how, many, how long have I told you? Just go and look at two or three random foreign newspapers every day, whether it's in London or... Munich or Paris, uh, obviously Jerusalem, you know, any, any, India, and any of the four newspapers, and you will find numerous stories on a daily basis documenting what Islam's really about. But we're going to get into that in just a second. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Appreciate you being with me as we get this week off to a, another start. And we're still here, praise God. And, you know, it's funny because every night we're on the air, people's lives are being impacted, souls are being saved. So, I mean, we never know when that, when the last days are going to come, when Jesus is coming. Only God knows that. So our job is to what? Be faithful every day, be obedient every day, do what we're supposed to do every day, treat each day like the gift from God it is, because at some point there are no more days. And sadly, for somebody like a Robin Williams, they choose to just end their life. And so sad. Not just sad because of the loss of a, of a great entertainment talent, but that's nothing. You know, <laughs> I've told you how many times when you stand before God, he's not going to care what your job was or what your position might have been certainly isn't going to be impressed by your bank account or your whatever wealth you may have accumulated. 
isn't going to be disappointed if you have no wealth. The only thing God is going to care about is the same thing God cared about today when Robin Williams took his last breath and stood before God. Do you know Jesus? Are you standing in front of me coated in your sin? Or are you standing in front of me with the white robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ? And again, I've done this for so long. I've dealt with the passing of some very famous people. And I've always looked at those as great opportunities to lead people to Christ. I mentioned Christopher Reeve. I did a devotional is entitled Superman is Burning in Hell. And that's by his own words. This wasn't some summation or a, a, you know something that I surmise. No. He flat out called the gospel a fantasy and Christianity a joke. So, and that's fine. That is his... He has the same free will every man, woman, man and woman has. And that's the ability to accept Christ or reject Christ. That's fine. But these are great opportunities. And I can't even tell you the thousands, thousands who came to faith in Christ through that one devotional about when Christopher Reeve died. And I know it was sad. I know he was paralyzed. And uh, see, 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 and I, and that's why. And I, I caught grief. Then I'll catch grief tonight. I caught grief when Bob Hope died. I mean, I, I got it. I mean, I've been doing this so long. I, I read. I, I can write the emails before the people that are upset even write them. Okay. Oh well. Because at the end of the day, your fond memories of Robin Williams are great. But at the end of the day. What, ma- what, what matters? Because this world as we know it is going to cease to exist one day. And yeah, as long as it's around, we'll have, the, we'll have the historical record of his movies to watch and his TV performances and all that stuff has been archived. But one day, all oh, that's going to be gone too. This world as we know it is going to cease. And at that moment, none of it matters anymore. Wood, hay, and stubble. And these are incredible opportunities to to tell the truth and to bring people the truth of the gospel. And I got some important truth for you tonight. And that's the truth about Islam. I warned you months ago that ISIS, which is nothing more than a bunch of Muslims, operating as Muslims do. Oh, did you hear did you hear one of the wonderful things they did today? Uh they caught this one family, mother, father, child, and uh demanded and they were Christians, demanded that the father renounce Jesus and accept Islam. He refused. And they kind of did something different. Normally, they would have cut his head off, crucified him, raped his wife in front of him, and then killed her in front of him. No, this time they took their five-year-old boy. One guy held his hands. One guy held his legs. They stretched him out, and then they took a sword and cut him in half. What were you? What were what, you? Surprised? You upset? This is what Islam's about. They found a mass grave of, I don't know, what it was, 150, 200 people that were buried alive. Christians, they buried alive. This is what Islam's always been about. They've been about torture. They've been about terror. They've been about domination. Never forget what I've told you about Islam. Their ultimate goal is to have a caliphate, an Islamic state that covers the entire world where it's all Islamic. That's what death to infidels mean. It's exactly what they're doing right now in, 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 in Iraq and in Syria, in the caliphate they've set up there. You're either all on board with Islam or you're dead. Pretty simple. They have a very real desire and goal 
to enact terror on Europe and the United States. This nation has been sleeping. This administration has underestimated. Oh, not because I say so. Because our dear leader, you know, King Obama, in an interview said, oh, ISIS, yeah, yeah, you know, just because you wear a Kobe Bryant uh, jersey doesn't mean you're Kobe Bryant. They're, they're the JV of, of Islam. Oh, really? They've done something that Osama bin Laden wanted to do but never could. The JV? They're out there mocking Obama on a daily basis, talking about flying the black flag of Islam over the White House. The JV, they're well-funded. They've stolen all of our Humvees and all of our weaponry that we left behind uh, for the Iraqi army. <laughs> and they're recruiting non-churched or church-rejecting young men and women in Europe and the United States. You know, that, that growing fraction of our society of disenfranchised youth who have grown up in the computer age, many social misfits, um, they're not wired to go join a street gang, but they're still looking to belong. And they get all, they get all infatuated with the romanticized version of the ideology of jihad. I told you, what, a month or so ago about the, uh, about the 20-some-year-old girl in uh, Denver that the FBI stopped at the airport. She's getting ready to fly to Turkey to join a jihadi that she was going to marry and become his wife and then come back here and, perpet and perpetrate jihad in Denver. They got another guy today in jail. I told you at that time. Just get ready. The floodgates are going to open. This is a very tech-savvy, um, social media-savvy group of jihadists now that are operating that are using the Internet to recruit. Not just in the Middle East, but in Europe and in the United States. And these are people that are going to be that hold U.S. passports that can go over there and if they're not properly screened, can be back here, fully trained, fully operational. Not that there isn't already an army of jihadists that have slipped into this country through our southern borders, thank you. The imminent threat of terror on our, on, on our soil, again, is so high and it's not a matter of if, only when. And the, and, and the chatter that's been, uh, that a lot of our uh, spy agencies have been picking up on, is kind of, it is scary in the sense that they're starting to abandon their big target uh, plans you know, World Trade Centers, the uh, Sears Tower in Chicago, you know, that kind of stuff. They've kind of abandoned those type of big target operations. They're, 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 they're starting to look now at shopping malls in Des Moines, Iowa, um, you know, a Walmart in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, See, 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 that's when real terror is going to set, is take, take hold in this country. Because we still are lulled into thinking that, you know, any terrorist activity that does happen, New York, maybe D.C., possibly Chicago, L.A., you know, again, high profile, because that's been their, that's been their, uh, their goals in the past, but it's these soft targets, you know, 
blowing up a high school football stadium in Texas. Do you know some of those Texas high school uh, uh, football games? They may have six, 7,000 people on a Friday night. <laughs> you know, I'm not talk- even talking about Dallas. You know, any of those, a lot of those cities in Texas, high school football is a big time deal. And they'll pull 5,000 people from the entire county on a Friday night to watch their local football team. Blow that up. Like I said, blow up a shopping mall in Des Moines, Iowa. You know, blow up a, a, a an office building, a, a ten story office building in you know Pueblo, Colorado. You know, start hitting some of those soft targets in places like that. Now you got real terror because people then will realize nothing's off the map. And you know, all throughout the Bible and human history, God has used human instruments to fulfill his plan and purpose. And we read throughout the Old Testament how the children of Israel, they would turn away from God, follow the false gods and the idols of the world, live in open rebellion to God and his commandments. And eventually God would have enough and just pour out his wrath on the children of Israel. Eventually, after a period of time, usually a generation, maybe two. God's grace and mercy would uh, be shown to the children of Israel. He'd give them their land back, put them back in a good place. They'd be thankful for a while, honor God. You know, everything would be great. Then they'd slip right back into the same pattern. Yeah. This nation is no different than the children of Israel. I mean, how how long do you think we can slaughter 4,000 innocent babies? How long do you think that we can uh, pervert the God's plan for marriage and the family? I mean, how long do you think we can just live in open rebellion to God? Literally swear at God, shake our fist at God every day and not expect God eventually to say enough. I'm just asking you. I mean, at some point, God just is done. You know, I was reading through some information over the weekend from the State Department. And it was some very dry, boring stuff, but it it, it was a lot of the State Department um, misses on ISIS. And not just ISIS, but Boko Haram and Al-Qaeda. They're not done. AQAP, which is, you know, primarily in Yemen, uh, Ansar al Sharif and Libya, you know, just a lot of these Muslim groups floating around that are all competing against each other in some way, shape, or form for money, for soldiers. And the way they compete is by the acts of terror that they can perpetrate that get noticed. Now, right now, ISIS is front and center because, number one, they've set up their own state. They got their own dam. They got their own power supply. They got an oil field. They robbed a bank in Mosul of, 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 of close to a, a three, four hundred million dollars. They're financed. They're buying... You, they're buying units of fighters. They, you know, they they don't buy mercenaries one by one now. They buy units. You know, three, four, five hundred at a time are moving into the state to be fighters for ISIS. They've captured the bulk of what our military left behind for the Iraqi army as they retreated to Baghdad. So they've got equipment, they've got numbers, they've got money, they've got power, they've got a state. They've got everything they need. You know, 
I know, we bombed a couple of their trucks. You know, thank God we dropped some food on that mountain. So uh, some of those poor people aren't going to die at least immediately. But we have no commitment to what we're doing there. Nor will we. I mean, look at what we've done in the last five years under this administration. And, that, you know, I'm just, I'm just being honest. Look at what we've done. We've totally destabilized the Middle, of e Middle East. What's happening with Israel and Hamas right now would not be happening, trust me, if Hosni Mubarak was still running Egypt. And the nightmare that has been Libya would not be happening if Gaddafi was still in power. Were these good guys? Of course not. They were dictators, brutal, nasty dictators. But they were secular dictators that basically we paid to keep stability and peace in the region. And for the most part, they've done, they did, they did their job. In return, we don't Inter interfere with their affairs. Well, we decide to interfere and we totally destabilize the whole Mid Middle East by so doing. The one guy that we should have been after, the strong man of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, we did nothing to him. He's still in power today. <laughs> Oh, it's just, you know, we should have left a residual uh, group of, I don't know, most said five to 6,000 troops in Iraq to maintain the stability once we left. Didn't do that for political reasons. Now Baghdad, the, 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 the Iraqi army is totally retreated into Baghdad, and they're just hoping to hold on to Baghdad now. They've pretty much given up on most of the country, although the Kurds have made some inroads thanks to some of our, the fact we finally sent them a few bullets to fight off ISIS. It's, it's just a mess. And here's the problem. Again, don't get distracted. Just like I told you, don't get distracted on the border. Oh, the children. It's got nothing to do with these law-breaking children. It's everything to do about national security and the opening of our border. Just the blatant opening of our borders is a national security nightmare that we will one day, unfortunately, see the results of. Mark my word. Listen, I've been doing... I've been online 15 years. I've been on TV for 10 years. Time after time, I tried to warn people. Warn people a decade ago about gay marriage. Oh, that's never going to happen. Told people a decade ago that we were going to have a total obliteration of the family because they were going to allow same-sex couples to start adopting children. Listen, if people want to be involved in a perverse relationship, that's their choice. Fine. Leave the kids out of it. Um, now you've got this perversion explode. Now you got the lesbians and the trannies fighting each other. That's how ridiculous it's gotten. You've got this whole, you know, like I talked about in the first hour, this whole, you know, gender identification problem. <laughs> this is what happens when you open the door to perversion. It's, it, it becomes a free-for-all. told you a month ago about the guy suing so he can marry his computer. <laughs> Why not? All he's got to do is use the same arguments that the, uh, that the uh, gay marriage folks used. It's their civil rights. Who are you to tell me who I can love? Blah, blah. Right down the list. Same arguments. They work. I mean, you just got absolute chaos. And the problem with what's going on in the Middle East, the problem with what's going on with this caliphate in Iraq and Syria, the problem you've got with the rise of all these Islamic groups in Africa and uh, 
in Malaysia. The problem you've got is you've got total, an, a totally unstable situation that has given rise to these groups, has allowed them to acquire power. Why we've done nothing, our absolute ability to do nothing has allowed these groups to formulate, gain power, gain stability, gain a foothold. And now we send a couple of planes to bomb a few of their trucks. And that's supposed to do what? So, the, and the end result is going to be simply this. You're going to see the end result in the news very soon in places like Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, uh, Missouri, Ohio, Alabama, Georgia, places like that. And then you're going to have mass panic, mass fear, and it's in that instability that feeds a true operation of Satan like the Islamist. And in the meantime, you've got the rise of Islam in this country like never before. You've got more mosques than ever. You've got more Muslims in this country than ever before. And at the end of the day, I told you their loyalty is not to this nation. It's to, it's to Islam. It's to jihad. It's to the ultimate goal of Islam. Islam, by its very definition, means domination. Their ult the ultimate goal of Islam that is taught in every mosque in the world is worldwide a worldwide caliphate, a worldwide Islamic state. I know people say, eh, it's silly, it never happened. Well, it's starting. And I told you how unstable Germany is, France, England, because they allowed that mass immigration of Muslims that has destabilized their populace. So people can laugh at me. People can call me a, a Muslim hater, a xenophobe, blah, blah, blah. And, and here's, what, here's what frosts me more than anything. Because I've had ongoing battles for the last, oh, five, so what's that, almost 10 years now with CARE, Council of Arab Islamic Relations, all over the country, not just in the Tampa area, but in their, in their main office out of uh, Virginia and D.C., in their, in their Chicago office, in their Los Angeles office, in their, in their Texas offices. Florida, obviously, because we're based here and several of their offices here. They have come after me with both. They, they will come after anybody in the media, like myself, Michael Savage, anybody that's going to tell the truth about Islam to silence them. Your big-time media outlets are so afraid of Islam, they won't tell you the truth. Even the great Fox News and Sean Hannity, He'll talk to you about Sharia and he'll warn you about all, but he always counters it. These are the radicals. No, Islam is radical. That's what people have got to understand. This isn't being perpetrated by a few bad apples like they want you to believe. This is what Islam has always been about, always will be about. And until we wake up and understand that, we're just sitting ducks. Sitting ducks. And we're going to see the results of all of our failed, not just our failed foreign policy, but we're going to see the results of a nation that has been sold a lie about what Islam is all about. You know, we just think it's a, a few whack jobs yelling Allah al Akbar. No, that's the war cry for all of Islam, my friends. And when they start yelling Allah al Akbar in Des Moines, Iowa's shopping malls get blown up, and Allah al Akbar in Texas's football stadiums full of people gets blown up on a Friday night, you know, maybe then people start waking up and realize this isn't a few radicals. This is the whole religion 
this false religion of Islam. It, it, and it's, I don't know why it's such a shock to people. All you got to do, again, is study their history. It's what they've always been about. So I don't know what more I can do to warn people. And in people then, and in just closing, people say, well, what am I supposed to do? You know, go start shooting Muslims? No. What we need to do is be prepared. We need to be praying for our uh, security agencies like the CIA and the NSA. I know they're, they're bad people. They spy on every. Well, you know what? There's a school of thought. If you're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing, who cares? I know it's the big brother and I have my rights and my privacy and all that. But this is why a guy like that, gender-confused, uh, convicted traitor, you know, Bradley Manning, and he can call himself Chelsea, he can call himself Julie, he can call himself Alice. He's Bradley Manning. He's a boy. That's how God made you, Bradley, a boy. So you may be gender-confused. I'm not gender-confused about who you are. You're a boy. And that absolute traitor to this country, Snowden, that Putin is protecting just to stick it in the eye of the United States because we're so weak and ineffective. That's why these people should be shot, literally. And in the past, those kind of people would have been. We've got real national security issues in this country that need to be addressed. And then from a spiritual, we better start praying because I'm telling you, once the hand of protection of God is lifted, all bets are off. All bets are off. 9-11 is going to look like a picnic when it's all said and done if we don't get back to God. I've been trying to warn people and, and tell people that's our only hope, our only answer. Because at the end of the day, all of our Spy efforts are only going to be as good as God's protection allows them to be. Don't forget, ISIS and the Muslims, they only have to be right once. You want to know what God's hand of protection looks like? I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like um, Fazed, that nice, quiet little Muslim boy, who tried to blow up a car full of explosives on a summer night in Times Square that probably would have killed more people than 9-11, injured three or four times that number, and by the grace of God, by the hand of God, he screwed up the detonator and it didn't blow up. Okay? That's what God's hand of protection looks like just so you know. That wasn't any great effort by our spy agencies. That wasn't anybody stopping a terror attack. That was the hand of God keeping that car from blowing up. Nothing else stopped it. That's the kind of hand of God that once it's raised, that car blows up. So, seven two seven six one four zero six nine nine. I'm Bill Keller. This is live prayer. I'm uh, glad you're with me tonight on this Monday night, Tuesday morning. Love to hear from you tonight as we work our way through the top of the hour. Give me a call. Love to pray for you, chat with you about whatever's on your mind. I know we covered a lot of territory tonight. Give me a call. Hi, this is live prayer. Hello. Seven two seven. 6140699. 7276140699. So glad you're with me tonight. If you're uh, new to the program, I uh, hope your uh, heart's intact. I know this is hardcore stuff and you're not used to it. I got it. Hi, this live prayer. Yes, sir. This is Richard. From North Carolina. Hey, Richard, Again. North Carolina. How's my buddy tonight? I'm doing great, and I hope you are. I am, my friend. Doing great. Had a good weekend. Looking forward to a good week. How can I help you tonight, Richard? Well, sir, 
I just wanted to remind our viewers to pray for our program Yep. and uh, the needs that we have. And I'm a little hoarse, a little under the weather, so I'll be glad to let you pray for me. But uh, you're on my mind and thank in you, my, my friend. heart. Thank and you. And we appreciate you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Father, I thank you for my brother tonight. And, Lord, I don't know what the issues he's facing right now with his uh, with his throat, with his voice. But, Lord, let him get a good night's sleep tonight. Touch him while he sleeps and let him wake up tomorrow feeling great with no repercussions and, and no problems with his voice. And I just lift up his family tonight, ask that you watch over them, provide for their every need, protect them from all the evil in this world, and bless them richly. And we'll thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate you, my brother. Praise God. One of your good friends from way back when we came back on in uh, North Carolina. 727-614-0699. Hi, this is Live Prayer. Hi there. Hey, Jim, how you doing tonight, buddy? Good, man. How can I help you tonight? Well, I'm a Bible-believing homophobe gun nut. You're a Bible-believing homophobe gun nut. Well, I don't... Oh, okay. That's what the media calls it. Why? Because you happen to believe the Bible about homosexuality? <laughs> sure. Sure of that Muslim kid, Australian, in Syria holding that severed head. Yep, yep. Isn't that lovely? That's what they that's what they teach their kids to uh to uh, this is what you do to uh infidels. Exactly. Yeah. And um I also wanted to mention I saw uh, a beheading video about ten years ago. Uh, Richard Pearl probably, the New York Times guy. Yeah, and it's not like people think chop. They have the music going and they're yep. chanting and yep. it's a violent, furious sawing. Well, I was just going to say, normally, if you you know if you've got any kind of uh, muscle development at all, unless you got a really sharp sword, uh, usually what they use it usually takes three or four good hacks to get your head off. Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, yeah, really. But, you is. know, I think uh, my comment for the bottom line is I think the Muslim extremists are doing the violence, but they all share the core belief. Yep. convert or die. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. He's right. And uh, and uh, the only thing I would correct is I wouldn't even I, I wouldn't even label as Muslim extremists. I just call them Muslims. That's what they all are. And, you know, they may not be the ones wielding the sword, but they all believe that that's what should happen to uh, to the infidels and beheadings and sawing kids in half and burying people alive. You know, they mocked the Christians by crucifying a bunch of them. And this is what they're about. Hi, this is Live Prayer. Well, I would be honored to. Who am I talking to? Uh, Cynthia Dunn. Hi, Cynthia. Where are you calling me from tonight, huh? Uh, it's Chicago. Chicago. Well, what, what can I pray with you about tonight, Cynthia? Well, I've been diagnosed bipolar. Okay. And um, my son is schizophrenic, and he's in a group home. All right. And I'd like to have prayer for both of them. Absolutely. Now, they got, I'm assuming they have you on uh, some sort of uh, meds for your bipolar, right? They do. Yes, they okay. do for about 15, 20 years. Good, good, good. Well, as long as you keep, as long as they keep those at a good place, you can still keep living a high quality of life. Amen. Yes, yes, That's... and also for smoking. I smoke two packs a day. <laughs> well, we need <laughs> we need to pray for that because uh, that's that's what's that's gonna kill good. you. Yeah, that's that's nothing but a slow form of suicide. Exactly. <laughs> well, let me pray yes. for you, Cynthia. Father, thank, thank you for you. Cynthia tonight, and thank you for the doctors that are keeping her on the, the right meds for her bipolar, so she can continue to live a high quality of life we pray tonight for deliverance from the bondage she's into tobacco take that from her lord so it doesn't become her death knell i lift her up tonight just ask for your strength to guide her and and and, and let her make that decision not to smoke and then 
fulfill that decision with your strength and your power. Pray for her son that you watch over him in that group home and, and just be with him in a special way. I just lift up this dear woman tonight as she reaches out to you tonight. We stand with her, praying for these needs for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. God bless you, honey. Praise God. There you go. 727-614-0699. 727-614-0699. This is live prayer on a Monday night, Tuesday morning. We're here live every Monday through Friday, midnight to 2 Eastern, 11 to 1 Central, 10 to midnight Mountain, 9 to 11 Pacific. Always good to have you with me. And uh, we're looking forward to a great week. It's off to a good start. And again, listen, for those of you who are big Robin Williams fans, I, listen, I love his movies. I do. Like most of his comedy, have an appreciation for his, uh, for his improv and his uh, ability to ad-lib. You know, very, very intelligent guy. I always said that. But uh, this isn't about him as much as it is about the choice we all have to make in this life at some point. Because life's going to be over quicker than we know it. You know, now, of course, Robin Williams chose to end his life today, which is even more sad that in the midst of all of his, all of his great talent, he was so tortured to the point where he had nothing to hold on to that could help him in his darkest hour. And, uh, yeah, there's some Christians. I, listen, I deal with Christians every day that... Uh, that uh, fight depression, and sometimes the depression wins. I get it. We've done a bunch of funerals over the years from people just like that, but for the most part, it's your faith that can help you out of those dark places. Hi, this is Live Prayer. Hi, Bill. It's Carolyn. Bloomingdale. Hey, Carolyn from Bloomingdale. How's my friend tonight? How are you? I'm darling? doing good. We're just plugging away. We're here, Bill. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're praying, we're and we're just going to keep... Down. Doing what we got to do. Number one, would you would you uh, walk up to a known? You know, we, I I live in Bloomingdale. Muslims yep. all over the place. You know, they own all the big homes and all that. Would you just go up kindly and say, "What do you think of this? That what this ISIS is doing, burying kids alive, killing them, cutting them in half, uh, going across the road? What do you think of that?" No, actually, I'd go up to the guy. I'd go up to the guy and say, "What do you, what, what, you know? What do you think about Jesus?" And if he's a Muslim, he's going to say, well, "I, I mean, think he's." What do a, you think about this kind of atrocity? That well, you know what you, you know what they're going to tell you, Carol. I'll tell you exactly what they're going to tell you because I've, deba I've debated debated them. They're 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 going to tell you it's horrible. That's not what Islam's about. You know, we don't no, believe that. Bad. We don't. You yeah. know, that's what they're going to tell you because I've debated them. Yeah. That's exactly what they say when you bring up those type of issues. They they what deny that that's what peace, Islam's about. Peace talk. Yeah, yeah. Another Hi. thing I got to tell you. Yes, ma'am. I called you last week or something. I was running out of faith, out of money for you, and right? Just issues swirling around me, and you kept me off mic, which was good, because I don't want our friends and people to know about my faithlessness. But I told my little. Bible ladies about it. You know, they come and meet at my house. Right, right, right. I, I supply a, a place for them to meet with discipleship programs. Yep. Whatever. Because and those, like the, those are the sweet ladies that are praying for me every day, right? And uh, every Thursday. There. Amen. So I told them that, you know, Bill gave me a whiplash. Yep. And I told them all about it. And, yep. you know, they kept repeating it to each one, to each one, to another one, to another one. And then some lady walked in and says, you know, my faith is I want to do something for the Lord. Nothing's happening. And and I says, you know, I just had a very wise man tell me it's not my program. <laughs> and I told them all. And he says, well, who's this? Bill Keller. Did you get a chance? Get on it, Jim. <laughs> thank you. Thank now, here's you, another thing, my yep. darling. Yep. My son thinks he moved to Bradenton, Florida, and the world was going to be different and all mm -hmm. this. He's mm -hmm. drunk every day, Bill. He mm. calls in the morning and mm. with his Baileys and coffee, and he's half shot in the morning. Oh, my. You try to bring... Whew. It, it just, you know, my, you're coming out in October. I said, yeah, I know, hon, I know, I know. And uh, 
I cried my heart out. He's my only son. He's my right. only connection. Right. And I lost him. You know, he's right. gone. He's not here anymore. Right. He's there. And you know what's sad? His wife's an alcoholic. Mm. But here's the thing. I don't so drink they every so, day the so, way he does. So, so they basically share that together, huh? And I don't drink every day. Bobby's a stone alcohol. Bobby's stone. No, alcohol. no, but you said his wife is too? His, well, here, she doesn't drink every day, but okay. certain days she stays up 48 hours or oh, 24 my. hours or oh, drinks my. some purple booze or something. Oh, and, my. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. It's got a, you know, I've all my life, I, my, you know, you're talking about Robin Williams today, and I won't sure. take up too much of your time. Sure. When these guys don't have anywhere else to go, mm. They say Robin Williams was in uh, AA, he went to Betty Ford, he went to mm. rehab, he mm. went to the Nothing worked. Mm. And the only reason someone commits suicide is a loss of hope. Hopelessness, absolutely. Yeah, we, exactly. deal, with it, we deal with it every if day here. there's no hope, you yeah. put the gun in your... That's it, there's no yeah. hope. Yeah. You hear the message of Christ? Yeah. Oh, hope. All that and is You're is right hope. when you say they won't. But my brother took the rope, put it around his neck, hung it up on the in the in the in the basement. My mm. mother upstairs, my mm. sister upstairs, mm. because he had done all the AA, all right. the rehab, all nothing worked. Right. He relapsed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes those programs are dangerous, Bill, well, because they listen. give you no more. Hope. When it's exactly. not about Christ, it's well, not about well, nothing. Yeah, well, and, 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 and just wrap things up, and, and, and unless you're committed to it, it can't work. Because unless you're committed to it... What are you committed to, Bill? Huh? What are you committed to, a higher power? No, 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 but what I'm saying is committed to stopping. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yes, yes. Because, be, because a be lot Christ. of people... It's a lot of strong to do alone, Bill. Well, yeah, well, a lot of people, they go into those programs because they're forced to either by legal situations or family or whatever, so they go just to shut people up, but they're not committed to stopping. I and know, in, I think Robin Williams was. Well, he yeah. He had no... Yeah. He had no, forgive the expression, superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's he true. had none. Yeah, you know, you know that show that they do uh, where they interview the the stars and they at the, with the guy with the he owns the school of uh, of acting and all that. And the last question he always asks is, if you were to go to heaven and God said to you, uh, uh, "What should I do for you?" or "What? Why would you be here?" or whatever. And he and he's sitting there saying, "Well, he would like to hear mo." Oh, what would you ask God? Not that thank you for my, it's, well, I would like to hear Mozart, I would like to hear, come on. Yeah, come on. yeah, yeah, the actor's studio, but I know this, what show you're talking about. what you about. said, yeah. I don't know if you, oh no, somebody else said it on one of the programs today, you know how they're Satanize him, you know. Um, All right. They said, call somebody that's in this hopeless. Right. Somebody who had some brains said that. Yeah. Because Bill, it's about hopelessness. But and, but but but, 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 but unless hope, you call them with the real, neck, but unless you call them with the real basement, hope, the hope of Christ, you know, it's ho- it's the, you're wasting your hopeless. phone call. Yep. But you gave. Yeah, I'll tell you what I told those girls, Bill. <laughs> I said he gave me a whiplash. You cannot believe, <laughs> girls. And they. And well, they let me pray. Let they, me pray for you, Karen. Let me pray for your son. Honey, appreciate it. Thank you. I will. Father, thank you for my friend tonight, and I lift her and her family to you. Pray for this son. Lord, bring somebody into his life, somebody into his life that's going to be able to speak truth to him, that's going to be able to open his eyes to the just the dark road he's on that doesn't ever end until it ends in disaster. I pray for his wife. I pray, Lord, that you bring people in their life that will help them to acknowledge their bondage and find strength in you to be delivered. Be with Carolyn. Watch over her. Be with her in a special way and, her, and, 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 and keep her and protect her and provide for her and bless her richly. And I just thank you for her witness tonight. I lift up that wonderful little prayer group at her house each Thursday and pray for each one of those and your blessings upon those dear sisters as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. 
0699. So glad to be with you tonight on this Monday night and Tuesday morning in most places. You know, we talked about Robin Williams at the start of the program. And if there was ever a, a I mean, we, I do this every night anyway, but if there's ever night to invite people to Jesus, boy, it's tonight. You got that example. You know, here's a guy, I mean, and, and I know, you know, we, we, we feel like we know these people because we see them on TV for so many years and see them in the movies and, you know, we follow their careers and, you know, you know obviously we don't really know them, but we feel like we do. So here's a guy that a lot of the world knew because of his, uh, his great gifts and talents that he received from God. So it's a perfect time to put it all in perspective because the second he took his last breath, and, and forget that it was at his own hand, because really at the end of the day, that's not the issue. The issue is the second he took his last breath, breath, all of his talent, his comedic genius, his great act, all that meant nothing. Just like when you take your last breath, whatever you did in this life means nothing. The only thing that's going to matter, I've told you a thousand times, the only thing that's going to, you're going to take into eternity, the only thing that's going to matter is whatever you did with Jesus. Or in too many cases, like Robin Williams didn't do. How sad is that? And while they spend the next couple days, you know, singing his praises and, you know, highlighting his career and going through all of his wonderful achievements, every one of those shows, every one of those exposés, every one of those uh Program is going to miss the most important thing. He's dead. And the second he died, according to the police, around noon Pacific time, 3 Eastern, the second he took it, only one thing mattered. What did he do with Jesus? And again, there is obviously the possibility he... Ask Christ into his heart. Again, I don't see that happening based on the fact that he then hung himself because if he asked Christ in his heart, like we were just talking with Carol, that, you know, that, that, that's your hope to hang on and to move forward. So it's very unlikely that happened. And it's most likely that he died in his sin and stood before God, not as Robin Williams the actor, not as Robin Williams the comedian, just as Robin Williams, God's creation. coated in the darkness of his sins. And it's his sins that cast him into an everlasting darkness forever separated from God as creator. Now, again, you know, you may be sitting there watching this program tonight. You don't buy that. That's fine. Because the alternative is Robin Williams died and he's going to get planted in the ground like a petunia, a dead petunia. If you want to believe that that's what life is, it's a cosmic accident with no rhyme or reason, no purpose. Because right at the end of the day, what, what, what was the purpose for Robin Williams if, if, if life comes and goes? Well, he made a few movies, made a few people laugh. Oh, well. At the end, in the scheme of things, what does that matter? Really? So life's about a few chuckles, a few, uh, you know, pleasant moments watching some fictional movie that's all it is it's a pretty pathetic existence if you ask me but if you're sitting there watching tonight and you don't want to take your last breath because that could happen in a minute now Robin Williams chose his last minute but most people don't it just happens sooner than you think and if you want to take your last breath knowing that you're going to be forever with God pray with me now will you dear Lord I come to you tonight, a sinner, asking you to forgive me my sins. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and take my life now and forevermore. I will live for you. 
from this moment forward, my life belongs to you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. And if you meant it, the words didn't save you. They were just a verbal guide for your faith. I get emails, you just can't pray a prayer and be saved. No, you're right. Because salvation is an act of faith and God's grace. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Those words are just a verbal guide for your faith. If you made that commitment, though, by faith in your heart, email me. My email address is at the bottom of my phone number, bkellertliveprayer.com. I've got a book I want to send you. It won't cost you anything. It will help you in your new relationship with the Lord. I know it will be a blessing to you. So please... Uh, Jot down my email address, bkellertliveper.com, and I'll get that out to you. And I'll even pay the postage, pay for the book. Again, this isn't about selling you a book. This is about helping you in your new relationship with Jesus. Amen? Praise God. All right, listen, as we uh, wrap things up, it's been a great evening. I know, I know, it's been a tough evening. I got it. And I know, kind of hard things for people to hear. And I know there's people maybe never watch the show thinking I'm the... I'm I'm some ogre from, uh, you know, the middle of the earth. You know, how dare I uh, say these things about a poor man that just died today, blah, blah, blah. You know what? That poor man that died today, it doesn't matter to him anymore. But it does matter to those who still have breath. And uh, it's a great example. But, uh, hey, as I sit here tonight, I honestly don't know what tomorrow's going to bring in a lot of ways. Uh, sadly, I don't really have much control of the program right now because we haven't made that payment that is so necessary. Um, we need 22 at the end of the month, but right now I'm just worried about the 15 we need immediately. And I know that the fact is I know there's somebody watching me right now that has the ability to help with that payment. Um, all I can do is encourage you to give me a call. And, uh, you know, if this is part of God's plan that we're only going to be on for six six months, a week, and a few days. Hey, that's six months, a week, and a couple of days, more than 99.99% of the people have ever been on in the city of Chicago telling people the truth all that time, saving souls. Several, four or five, almost 5,000 souls are going to be in heaven because of what we've done these months. Tens of thousands of lives impacted. Hey, if that's what it was about, that's great. If it uh, helped bring a bunch of people to live prayer, uh, obviously, we're still on going to the TV show is not going anywhere. Even if Chicago does, and not only that, but uh, I'll be there in November for a great uh, Saturday and Sunday. So if that's all it was about, that's fine. I believe in my heart it's more than that, but it's going to take fifteen thousand for that to be true. But again, I'm not here about money. If I was, I wouldn't be worried about fifteen thousand. I'd be worrying about my next Gulf Stream or mansion, but. Uh, I'm just trying to scrape up enough to keep keep the program going. And I and I know we get the 15 in in the next, you know, right away so we can get them the money. They'll give us a break to on the 22 till the end of the month. And once we get that, we're pretty much current. Hallelujah. We're only 37 from being current. It's not that much money at the scheme of things. But I need you to pray, and those who are able, I need you to help, okay? Love and care about you. Uh, you can go to my website. On the left menu bar, there's a donation link for credit cards. Whatever you can do, if you want to step up and really make a difference, that's going to make a difference in thousands of lives over these next few weeks, help me. God bless you. And listen, I'm praying for you every day. Know that. And I thank God for you each night. I thank God for the time we have each day because it's a gift from God. I never take one program for granted because I never know when it's going to be my last I'm no different than you. Tomorrow's promised to none of us, even me. So God bless you. Have a great night. God willing, we'll see you in 22 short hours for more life prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard.